question for you, if you don't mind. Please. So, in your experience or in your opinion, rather, what do you think is the most efficient and effective learning environment? Efficient and effective learning environment. A lot of things contribute to this particular term. So, you have asked a simple question, you know, it's not that uh, it's a single answer to it. Because you look at it, there are major two elements there. One is the learner and one is the facilitator. I have come to facilitator because nowadays the concept of teaching has gone uh, out of uh, context. We only have facilitators who support learning. So, a learning environment, I will talk about first what are the various characteristics of a good learning environment and then we will see how it can be made more efficient. Characteristics include a very friendly and a good environment, you know, a place which is bright and uh, exciting for uh, learners to come and visualize and, you know, be creative and look at things in their own way, where they are free to express, where they don't have any inhibitions or fear, you know, and where they can interact well. So, this is one aspect. It also requires a lot of uh, inputs in terms of infrastructure because modern learning has changed in a drastic way. It is not like just the mundane style of teaching which used to be in our times, you know, where a teacher comes and talks and we listen to it. So, that is one aspect. So, a lot of infrastructure based requirements. And lastly, you know, like technology. We are looking at a lot of uh, new technology which has influenced the learning these days. So, that is also part and parcel of the learning environment. So, I will touch all these things one by one. So, Please do. first, when we look at a learning environment and I said the major stakeholders are the learners and the facilitators. So the learners must actually feel comfortable. It must be something which uh, is suiting their uh, style of learning. Okay. Hence a facilitator must be very careful that in the learning process all the different styles of learning are incorporated. Mm -hmm. See, as, as per a, their individual needs exactly, like you said. Oh, okay. A student is there who learns by visual uh, method. So, for such a student, you know, if there is a restriction that he only reads and learns, he might not be comfortable in the process. Likewise, the other way around. A student who reads and learns will be better to do it by reading. He would not be more interested in the visuals or, you know, the kinesthetic kind of effect. So, there are kinesthetic kinds of learners and there are those who learn by discussions. Right. So, modern... Uh, Facilitators are very cautious and careful and they get a training in this process also. So, they incorporate all these different methods of uh, learning in their uh, delivery process so that, you know, a learner is uh, getting something which at least suits his or her learning style and they can go ahead with that. How do you think uh, technology plays a role in this? Yeah, technology, of course, you see, uh, it facilitates the learning process. Because previously we had what was a blackboard which got replaced by, you know, the OHP projectors and all. Nowadays we have those uh, uh, presentations, we have access to information has increased drastically with the availability of internet. So many websites and search engines which are available that and online libraries for that matter, you know, so encyclopedias and uh, so on. I can uh, name so many of those. So today information is at the fingertips. But to ratify this information, to make sure that students get access to the right kind of information and at the right time, that mm -hmm. is the challenge for a good facilitator. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a dual challenge because not only it's necessary that they have to be updated with the information, they also must be able to, you know, differentiate and explain this difference to a student. Nowadays, the generation which is there is not one which is afraid of asking. So, they want their answers and they would be very happy to question you if they are not satisfied with the answer right. that you give. Right. So, you must be very clear. If I say that this is wrong, I must justify that why it is wrong and what is the alternate which is better. Yeah. So, this is one. Unlike the older times when teacher would just exactly. say wrong and you have to just take it as by exactly. its face value. But now we have Google yes. and very rightly you said that, you know, justification is asked and justification is right exactly. there to present. Yes. So this is where, uh, and again, you see the technology has come in different forms. It could be laptops, it could be tablets, it could be mobile phones, it could be Bluetooth and so on. 
I am not going to say if you say that this is right and this is wrong. We would actually be doing an injustice because at times we would ourselves be requiring to use the alternatives. Right. So all the technology is available for us. We must ensure that we use it in a positive manner. The usage is our ability, and make sh- making sure that the student also uses it in the right fashion is what is the challenge for a facilitator or a teacher today. So these are some aspects of uh, teaching and learning, which is like uh, very important to make the environment. very genial and you know easy for yeah. getting the necessary results all right so as i said the students are uh, very different and they are very bold and they are not afraid of asking which is a great thing right you know that's exactly. a, that's a very good uh, evolution in terms of you know yes. right generation and students this has made the role of a facilitator equally you know challenging because they also must keep learning Yes. So it's uh, like it's. I cannot say that I have been teaching this subject for last twenty years. So you know, I know A and Z of it. So I don't need to refer, because things are changing. The world is changing, and the theories are also changing. Yeah. So when things are changing, we have to also be abreast of what changes are happening, so that you know we are able to face the questions which could be coming from the next generation, which is coming to classes. Well, this brings very important points that you brought, and I'm really curious to know your opinion on uh, how do teachers feel about learning from their students? Do they feel any kind of inhibition when it comes to learning from the students? Because I believe you can learn from anyone, huh? I uh, you must be able to learn from everyone and from every aspect. See, I just share a small uh, joke here. Uh, it's not necessary that uh, from everybody you will learn something good. a lot of uh, times you may face a situation where you sit in a session and learn how not to do something rather than how to do something true but that is also a learning you know if uh, you sit in a session and you find it's very boring it's something which you should understand that see i did like this because maybe you know there were no visuals or this thing and it was not suiting so maybe i should ensure that i don't do the same thing to my students so there is a never ending process of uh, learning interestingly the students must also feel very comfortable with their uh, facilitator right you know the environment cannot be like uh, you listen and i say it could be we listen yes and in fact uh, in um, many places what i do is i let the students take the lead you know yeah so they have an option to exercise their control and ability and show that they can be good leaders they take over the sessions wow they conduct the sessions by themselves and you know like uh, as a facilitator i just provide my guidance where it is required and sometimes you know students do such a wonderful session that i make notes for myself which i could use in uh, coming sessions well that's wonderful that's wonderful yeah. so you're talking about more of a collaborative exactly. uh, environment than you know one way street over there where teachers yes. giving a session and okay wonderful students needs to be encouraged you know they have that um, some of them may still have See, in Asia, the culture is a little bit like we respect elders, and you know we listen to them. We don't uh, misbehave in front of uh, our uh, peers and such things. But again, when it comes to a focused and a good learning environment, these actually are some barriers, right? Which actually puts a student. You know, there is a fear that whether I should ask. That fear should be killed. First of all, we should encourage them to ask questions. Let them feel at home. Let them feel comfortable. they have every right to be wrong you know because this is the place where actually they are paying to make mistakes and that is what we are getting paid for to correct their mistakes right so if we don't do it here then they are going to struggle in the outside world which is not at all the job of a good uh, facilitator or a teacher today so this are certain things like which uh, i and you know some of my colleagues here we take uh, good care of we encourage students to be bold to ask their questions to be absolutely wrong So that means uh, students at MBEST should be absolutely fearless when it comes to learning. Definitely, Wonderful. definitely, they Wonderful. should be inquisitive. They should seek uh, knowledge and uh, you know seek different sources, and feel free to make as many mistakes in the process, so that you know, as long as they don't keep repeating the same mistakes mm-hmm. again, we are okay with that. Yeah. wonderful so i have one more question for you yes. before i let you go um because we were talking about learning and everything and uh, at the end of the day there is assessment yes so um do you think that the standardized way of testing 
is uh, is the way to go about assessments even in the modern era see uh, this is again a very interesting question again and it's very debatable also because uh, i would say that you know not all students who score 80% or 90% for that matter are extremely good uh, or proficient students in that particular subject because a test which happens at the end of a semester is a one day event and there are different ways of preparing for an exam so students can by heart a lot of information actually vomit it in the exams and you know score high marks but 3 days later if you start asking them something on that topic they are vague they don't have the ability to discuss so ideally you know a good way of evaluation though of course you see i cannot uh, make a system as per my choice there are certain systems we have to follow but again we try to incorporate a lot of innovation in the evaluation process also mm-hmm. there is a continuous assessment which happen so students are given projects and uh, students are allowed to participate in classes and lead sessions and you know such activities which are also marked okay so over a process what happens is uh, there is some pros- uh, percentage of marks which is given for the term end exams which is of course as per the guidelines of the university and the other uh, you know big authorities which are there right but a continuous learning uh, evaluation helps you know the teacher also to assess the student at different levels it gives a student an opportunity to score in areas where he or she is good and they excel so overall you know it influences the best results from a student you can ask you know that there are options like there is a closed book exam there is an open book exam so yes a combination of both is the ideal way according to me you cannot have a complete open book system or you cannot have a totally closed book system if you can bridge the gap you know both have their own uh, values one test the ability of a student to memorize and remember things and you know like retain what he has learned whereas the other is testing the ability to apply concepts and you know tr- test out the learning in practical situations case study is a method where you know student applies what they have learned in classroom theory and put it in practice so a combination of such methods is the right way to evaluate a student Wonderful. so we try to incorporate as different methods so that you know like uh, see again there is a very interesting question here why do you conduct an examination yes an examination is not conducted to check only what a student has learned the ideology behind an exam is to help him move out from that level to the next level right to help the student to pass the exam the ideology or the concept behind conducting exam is to help a student to pass so if we do not look at areas where the student is strong then we are not doing our job aha uh-huh, right so it's more of a correcting the student after seeing where they are yes. lacking perhaps yes yes okay that's a very uh, positive you have put it in a very positive light and i think students also should be looking at it in this point of view only yeah yeah but then yeah i mean uh, uh, we cannot ignore uh, that you know there are institutes and there there are uh, facilitators who who um, who think that you know exams are the ultimate criteria so that is a thought process which is fast changing yes which is fast changing see in uh, during my t- uh, time in uh, international uh, institutions across the globe i have seen that they use a combination of both st- methods to you know evaluate students some persons who are you know not very good at writing or uh, you know memorizing things but apply the learning very nicely in real life situation so this kind of uh, thing so you will find that you know always uh, the top rankers in a institution may not be the most successful people in the industry right so this change itself must make one realize that uh, there is a different way to evaluate a person and there is nothing that this is the finite way yeah so those were really really insightful points sir thank you so much for your time thank you so thank much you.